we have some hilarious news courtesy of USA Today. Um, everyone's favourite or not so favourite um, doctor on the whole podcast circuit, especially the LA comedian circuit, especially, you know, the Yo Mama's House crew, Dr. Drew has <laughs> tested positive for COVID-19. And the reason why it's funny is because he was one of the... He was one of the loudest um, critics and uh, naysayers when it came to when it comes to the press or the media's coverage of COVID. Now he might have had a point. Yeah, I think the US um, coverage of COVID has been a little bit more um, scaremongery than it has been in the UK. We've obviously have some, you know, I think for the most part, maybe because of how we approach things, UK US people tend to be a little bit more boisterous, a little bit more, you know, out there with everything. Even their sports analysis is a little bit more rah rah, shouty shouty. So that might just be a cold thing who knows but um you did get the feeling especially with covid being turned political in the u.s with you know essentially the republicans saying open everything back up and let people just <laughs> fall as they may and then the democrats on their side telling everyone to stay in their bunkers um there was a there was just like more of a it, it was it was an ideological split it felt like as opposed to like a let's let's analyze the evidence see what's working best let's put weigh up all these different aspects that are playing that are coming into play and make some sort of reasoned decision it was mostly just a red and blue thing and it seemed like in my opinion from what it seemed like that drew was kind of leaning more to the red side yeah because he's just thinking it's scaremongery you're not you know you're, you're you're drumming up fear it's not it's not much than a common flu i don't think he may say common flu but he was basically giving that sort of assumption or alluding to that sort of thing then he was going on all these like you know um i'd say right wing mostly platforms and saying this sort of thing and at the time they were also espousing this sort of stuff as when trump was saying it wasn't such a big deal um and then i guess you could excuse him by saying that it was at that time but there was still enough evidence for somebody of his position especially considering the amount of people he speaks to and being a doctor too right you'd imagine he'd be a little bit more ideologically neutral in that respect he did have responsibility to be a little bit like hey even though i think this let's adjust judging by what the data says let's just do this and do that do you know what i mean he could have been a little bit more um, careful with these words but he was very very gung, gung ho and shouty about the fact that he thought COVID wasn't a big deal then of course you know the numbers start spiking and the US has you know crazy numbers now of cases right I don't even want to look at how much how many people have got COVID and unfortunately have passed away it makes complete sense considering you know how different states have handled it um, how people have basically you know d decided it's some sort of um deep state conspiracy it's just so much mess david to deal with just the issue itself that it just gets a little bit crazy but regardless the numbers are crazy and then dr drew didn't really he apologized begrudgingly right it took him a while to apologize and then when he did finally apologize he made it seem as if um the trolls on the internet had sort of like chased him off social media i remember he posted some weird video of him sitting in a cabin somewhere um you know um whispering into a camera which is really strange right he didn't really seem that repentive of how he kind of went about doing it and 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 i think since then people have kind of um people have kind of distanced themselves somewhat a bit from him of course your mom's house crew have sort of like stuck with him but i even mentioned i saw um andrew um andrew santino kind of call him out on it i think on one of his podcasts and basically his, you know call him out any shit on how he sort of downplayed the whole thing which was quite refreshing to see but i think ever since then any hope of drew pinsky ever appearing on joe rogan with evaporate because i don't think joe rogan's ever been a fan of dr drew anyway and he's always kind of thrown out hints to like tom segura and stuff that he wants to be on the show but you know it's never happened and since this whole thing transpired and he got made to like an absolute idiot um that's not gonna happen and of course now months after apologizing he's now got covid it's just hilarious again it's not no one's wishing any harm on the guy hopefully he recovers and he's well he's downplayed it enough so it shouldn't be that big of a deal right he should take all the necessary medicines and you'll be fine but it's just hilarious how um how sort of uh petty this virus seems to be the people that are the loudest detractors of it the people that sort of speak about it in the most boastful even trump fair enough he didn't you know have any not, nothing ex extremely tragic happened to him but he has changed his stance somewhat regarding covid he has sort of simmered down on the whole rah-rah talk maybe it's because you know he ended up eventually losing the election which he still disputes but he sort of calmed it down it has a it has a habit of sort of humbling people it feels like covid anyway this is the article here from usa today dr drew pinsky test positive for covid19 months after apologizing so it's here 
After months of apologizing to Dan Plain, the coronavirus pandemic, celebrity doctor Drew Pinsky has revealed he tested positive for the virus on Instagram post on Tuesday. Pinsky, 62, known as Dr. Drew, is seen in bed holding a bottle of electrolyte drink while his wife wears a face mask nearby. The caption noted his wife tested negative. He said Drew is home under surveillance and fever is down. Thanks, Dr. Zelenko, Dr. Yo, and um, Dr. Jeff for the superior care and advice. Drew is feeling better and will hopefully get well soon. And that's the irony of it, right? He's telling everyone else that it shouldn't be a big deal. But Dr. Drew is an actual doctor. He has, you know, people in the medical field. Uh, he has all this sort of background knowledge of what's going on. So effectively, if he gets COVID, his experience is going to be nothing like you or I, right? Fair enough. The statistics still say people within our age group, let's say we're all under 50 or under 60 years old, will be perfectly fine. But still, the, I think the recklessness that some of these people speak about COVID, like, I'm all right with, you know, that, or what was it? Is it the Miami mayor? Is it Miami? Yeah. He's like come out of Florida, right? He's basically said, look, I'm not closing down again. I'm kind of okay with that stance because he's taking like a calculated guess because, you know, he's a mayor at the end of the day or a governor, whatever it may be, but a doctor's like, you've got to relax. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that bless you for that, but but yeah, look at him, man, sitting down, he's lying down in his bed, looking poorly as hell. Like God Almighty, how embarrassing! <laughs> so, but let's continue. So it continues. It said Andrew's home that in the following post, Pinsky appeared via video explaining he has taken a lot of good medication and thanked his fans for their support. He said, COVID is no fun. I don't, what is it in the caption or video? Oh, in the video. Okay, let's see what video that is because I haven't seen the actual video of him speaking about it, but let's see what he says himself. Okay, I think oh, he's made so many. He's making like diaries, right? I'm assuming, right? Here's him. What is he talking about here? How long is it? Two minute diary. COVID update. Thank you for your support. <laughs> what a mug. Hey everybody, Dr. Drew, thanks for uh, checking in on me. I appreciate all the uh, kind shout outs. Uh, COVID's no fun. I don't recommend it. But uh, I think he's ignoring a lot of the negative shout outs too. I think there's a lot of people that are taking a lot of joy in his misery at the moment. But hey, you got to keep a positive outlook on things, isn't it? I'm sort of through the viral phase, which uh, is when virals, the virus is reproducing. And uh, I took a lot of good medication to attack that early. We've got a lot of stuff we can do now. And uh, then got on some Decadron now that I'm in the inflammatory phase. My lungs are filling up and all that good stuff. But, uh, and man, am I glad to get this now and not earlier in the course. And we didn't have so much to do. Uh, I'm waiting on a monoclonal antibody infusion with Bamlanivinab. Hopefully I, I can get that. And if this thing resolves before I can get the infusion, so, so much the better. Um, it's interesting. Hey, Jason Waller. Hey, buddy. I um, put out on Twitter that I was uh, uh, thankful to get my, co or wishing for a COVID positive test because I had this terrible acute febrile illness and was testing negative. And if I did not have COVID, I had acute lymphocytic leukemia, which I did not want to have because that's the only thing that would do uh, what was happening. Yeah, great justification there, isn't it, Dr. Drew? Anyway, move back to the article. It continues. Uh, he said, so uh, people who recover from COVID-19 are believed to acquire at least one lasting immunity against the disease as their bodies produce a protective antibodies and immune systems memory. But evidence remains limited, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the funny thing. Oh, okay. This actually, he says here that article uh, in April, Pinsky apologized for a series of statements unspoiled um, in a video in which he downplayed a virus and suggested it was a press induced panic, right? This was in April. This wasn't even like in February. In April, he was sticking his neck out saying, This is a hoax. It's like, what? <laughs> and if you want any proof about that, this is a great video someone put together um, on Twitter that basically compiled a lot of his greatest hits when he was sort of downplaying the whole thing. And I'm going to play it now because why not? It's funny, isn't it? Worse than the flu. It's way less virulent than the flu. So it's a reminder that you're more likely to die of influenza. So go ahead and get your flu shots. Mild. Doesn't hurt anybody. That should be the headline. Way less serious than influenza. That's the headline. I know what the 2% lethality thing is you have there. Are you talking about the coronavirus? I think it's less than 2%. And I recognize the irony of myself sneezing and blowing my nose as we are listening to, to Drew to work with her thingy. He's a virus, but trust me, I have allergies. This isn't anything else. 0.02%. Less dangerous than influenza. Less dangerous than influenza. Um, your probability of dying from coronavirus much higher being hit by an asteroid, I would say. 
The flu virus in this country is vastly more consequential, and nobody is talking about this. Oh, Jesus Christ. It is, it is a press-induced panic. I am angry about it. It is the flu. If you're Imagine following up somebody on the station telling you it doesn't worry me at all. It should worry you somewhat that this new virus that comes out of nowhere is taking out large swaths of the populations. Well, not large, but, you know, considerable amount, right? And people that you would actually care for, right? People that you would actually miss. Because all this idea that, oh, they're just old, it's okay. They can kind of, you know, fall by the wayside. It's a nonsense, isn't it? Don't you people have grandparents or parents or people that you'd love down over the age of 60? Or, or is everybody pretending that they're sort of a member of some sort of hype house or whatever it may be that all their friends happen to be under the age of 24 this is just a mad like again fair enough it's america so it's a hard it's a difficult thing to even address over there because there's so many layers and so many things attached to it i don't think the black lives matter protest helped either with the protest with the whole um how people kind of accepted the science from with uh, relating to covid i don't think that helped things i think people are like you know sensible people are thinking hold on if if covid is real why are all these people outside protesting right why are my businesses locked down why don't why does my restaurant go out of business and these people are allowed to smash up the cnn you know building whatever it may be i think people are kind of you know and then i think that sort of set in motion and then you got proud boys you got the q and on thing you've got people getting cancelled online there's loads of things that just happen at the same time that i think people well naturally skeptical i can understand it but again i'm saying that he this isn't some random person online this isn't some random guy on the reddit forum this is a legit doctor who's meant to be advising you and providing some sort of impartial neutral um you know advice um due to you know based on his learnings based on his education based on his experience and based on the data and the science that's available so you can make an informed choice he can't force you to do anything but him sort of imbued imbuing his own person his own sort of like um ideologies into it his own personality whatever it may be it's just that's why probably these personality these personalities personality um, driven tv doctors are problematic in that way in it because everything's like a show even their responses end up being quite overly dramatic for the sake of it, it doesn't really need to be right your doctor you just needs to kind of call, what are the cold hard facts here are the options here's what i've analyzed here's what's the here's the research that's out there at the moment make a decision based on what's available blah 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 but all this other stuff like you know it's just wild like going on these talk talking head shows and what adding to the confusion it's just unnecessary if you're under 65 and you get it you're gonna have the flu and you're gonna be fine oh it's God. gonna be just like the flu and there's been a number of people who've passed away, right? A number, not even a small amount. There's been a number of people, especially in America, that have unfortunately passed away due to complications with COVID. Now, it hasn't been, the data has been annoying because it's not been a direct thing, but come on. It's going to be almost identical. Oh I, I can see it God. coming. Americans in 2020 panic is toilet paper. Right. Antibacterial gel. Right. In, in response to the flu, it's right? A flu. And it's a different flu. And it's, if you notice, it's Corona 19, which means there's at least been 18 of these other ones. Oh, yeah. Go to the movies. Why do you think, like, the, the NBA now discussing the idea of playing without fans? And UCLA today announcing that their sports are going to be without fans. I, I, think that's a, I think that's a mistake. Should the Olympics be canceled? That's <laughs> funny. Have you noticed yeah. less people out on the streets? Oh, absolutely. The less people in the trains, for sure. Well, they, they told them, uh, de Blasio told them not to ride the trains. And right. So they're not riding the trains. And and so I am. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Say we do have 100,000 deaths in the country. Remember, we get 30,000 deaths from the flu. This is going to be, we predicted from the beginning that this is going to be worse than the flu. So we'd have to at least have 30,000 deaths for it to be worse than the flu. Exactly. But do we wait till 20,000 people die and then start panicking? It's not going to happen. Okay. That's the point. It's not. Jesus Christ, Dr. Drew, man. What an absolute donut. Again, we'll hope he gets well soon, innit? All that malarkey, but what an absolute idiot. It is what it is, isn't it? You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You put out your opinion in that way, and sometimes it does. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't pay off. And I guess in this respect, it definitely has not paid off.